welcome to New Star Communications, providing excellence in training. I'm Buck Ryan, Director of the School of Journalism and Telecommunications at the University of Kentucky. I'm also the creator of the Maestro Concept, a new approach to writing and editing that's changed the way newspapers operate here and abroad. I've traced the impact of the Maestro Concept to 48 states, Washington, D.C., and nine foreign countries. I've seen newspapers seize the concept and be transformed, winning a record number of awards. I've also seen newspapers try the concept and go nowhere with it. Today I'd like to explain the concept, do a mock maestro session with you, and offer you advice on how to be a winner with the maestro concept. The maestro concept story begins with a mugging. No, not me. Copy editors at newspapers introducing pagination were being mugged by the mismanagement of the implementation of new technology. The technology was radically different, but newsroom organizations stayed essentially the same. I thought there had to be a better way to mesh human beings with the new technology to improve newspapers' quality. That way was the maestro concept. Now all I needed was a newspaper editor adventurous enough to try it. That editor was Dan Blum, and the year was 1991. Two years later, I introduced a videotape and report to the American Society of Newspaper Editors telling the success story of the first paper to adopt the maestro concept. I'd like to show you that videotape now, then we can pick up the story from there. The Maestro concept flattens the newsroom management hierarchy, puts decision making in the hands of those with the most expertise, a novel concept for newspapers, and brings reporters, photographers, designers, and editors together as a team at the beginning of the story. It replaces the traditional Henry Ford assembly line, piecemeal way of doing things with a project based, teamwork intensive approach. If I had to summarize what the Maestro system was all about in one quote, I would say it's a system designed to prevent you from ever hearing anybody in the newsroom say, you know what we should have done after they see the paper come off the press on a given day. Story slug? The Maestro session convenes all the principles involved in a story okay, after yeah, preliminary reporting, right. but before any writing, photography, or design. At this point, we know we have a story. We just want to be sure that it's fully reported and presented in the most compelling way for readers. Okay, um, story idea in 30 words or less. The only business in a small town burns down effect it has on the community. The maestro directs the session and orchestrates the creative energy. At this paper, a 15,000 circulation afternoon daily, the maestro would be the equivalent of managing editor. We are not at the point where we maestro every story. I would say we maestro eight out of 10. An average maestro planning session lasts 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, why should I care? My best answer would be because fire can strike anyone. Yeah. And it was the it, only place in town. It was the only thing these people had. Our beats are really the same. We're not getting different stories. We're getting better stories. They're the, they're the same stories that would have, I mean, they would be here whether a maestro was here or not. The difference is they're like answering readers' questions, and, uh, they're better packaged, not, it's uh, easier for the reader, and I think it's making the staff happier. Main head, Patton's loss. Yeah, that's good. Uh, subhead. You know, one, Explain then. Yeah. Like a, Explain what Patton's what loss is. Yeah. Any type of graphics. It'd probably be a good idea to do a map to show exactly where it is. What about photo ideas for now? What do you think? Oh, uh, is there any part of the building that still remains standing? Do you know? If I think there's, I think part of it's there. I mean, I know it was a total loss, but I think there's certainly debris, um, but there's probably some shell of a building. Well, we could get her um, kind of walking through the rubble and the oh, debris. Yeah. All right. 
looking for uh, any mementos or souvenirs. We'll need to run that fairly large, though, to, to show her some detail. And okay, what do you think as far as the page layout? Um, obviously, the photo's going to be pretty big, so if I go full column to that, use that. <clears throat> Patton's loss is going to be a short head. So we're going to start the sidebar up next to it, put the map inside, and run. If you, you get mean the, the history, little facts, the history facts? If you get the history of the town, do right. that around there, or just something about the store itself and the reader action box here on if they want to help. And run. In the event uh, we can't come up with a horizontal, is your layout, uh, can you configure yeah, your layout to a short vertical? Short headline like that, that'd be no problem. Just because I don't know what it looks like. And right. It could be. I'm just assuming a building and yeah. it's going to be horizontal, but if the, the photo is very vertical, just go the other way with it. And, you know, what you can do to help here. And then just run the box with the, with the map here and history about it there. What about the old photo? And if you get that, we'll just use it in with one of these two boxes inside either box here. Right. That won't be a problem to switch. The headline's short enough that we can go either way with it. Sounds good. Okay, that's it. If I had tried to do that story, the story Patton's loss, before the Meister session, I think um, we would not have had the information box on the history of the community. I don't know that we necessarily would have had the map. We didn't run that many boxes before to encourage reader action. The way the story was written had a lot to do with the way the planning went. Breaking news is easier to maestro. Obviously, if you have a double murder suicide on the west side of town, you're not going to say, OK, everybody get a cup of coffee, and we'll all sit down and have a meeting. I mean, you can't do that. You have to, to take it as you can if you do a meeting on the fly. Um, I've had situations where everyone's together putting on their coats. The designer comes up. We do it in two or three minutes while everyone's going out the door. I've been yelling at them out the door as they go out. It works in features, works in business, and at our paper, sports, has its own maestro system. The, the idea of writing the headline and uh, the subhead and the decks and the pull quotes first, I was pretty apprehensive about that at first. Um, being the traditional type of reporter that I was, I, I felt that you know, how can you write a headline before you write a story? It just doesn't sound, it doesn't sound sensible. But once you start doing it that way, you realize how much more creative that you can be in the story itself. You're not forcing a story with the maestro system. An analogy would be if someone comes in for a job interview. I know what questions I want to ask this person. I don't know what the answers are going to give me, but I do know what questions I want to ask. And that's kind of how the planning system works. The maestro project, along with the changes we've made in the editorial department, have uh, really not increased uh, cost significantly, but we've been able to improve the quality of the product immensely. And I think that's very important for publishers and other newspapers to know. I'm very encouraged by what I see here. Each time I come back to Logansport, it seems like they've moved the paper to another level of quality. In 1992, the first year of the Maestro concept, Every staff member and two former staff members won awards, either from the state AP or from the state press association. That's double what the paper had ever won before. I think the change that we have seen as, as staff and from my perspective that the maestro process has brought to the paper is that we have more dramatic presentation, that the presentation is more relevant, and that we find that local stories of impact have pushed out a lot of the institutional reporting that we may have done in the past. The maestro system lets you connect with readers in a more significant way, more directly, with more impact. The Ferris Tribune has seen a dramatic change in its format and in its physical presentation in the last um, one to two years. I think the way that the paper is laid out now in boxes in different types of formation makes it much easier for us to spot the news. I find that I am spending more time reading more stories in more different sections than I used to because the coverage is simply broader and the, the application is to the community is made clearer. I think the Meister system has definitely improved the accuracy of our headlines. 
it's necessary to change the wording of a headline uh, because of space constraints on the page, it's more easily done now with a suggested headline on top of the story than it would be if we were starting from scratch. My job changed mostly um, because of the fact that I now have some input into the planning process. Uh, prior to going to the Maestro system, uh, my job as page designer was basically to take what was handed to me and put it together on a page. I think there's less rewriting than there used to be because everyone knows what's expected. The planning process has helped me prioritize what I'm doing in a number of ways. I know when something is going to be the major piece, so I know to put the extra effort into it. And also, we always talk about when is the story going to run. I've worked at other newspapers, and there was always, you know, the, the, the photo assignment either up on the terminal or it was in your box in the morning or in your afternoon and that was your input you could go back and say well this is a dumb assignment to the photo editor and if he didn't feel like hassling with the reporter or the the, the city editor then that was your assignment and, and that, you could still come away with a good photo but it took it it, it just it, there was four or five more steps involved with going over to the reporter and saying well look you know I, I don't understand this could you rewrite this could you do this how about this where this is all done at the beginning, and to me that's by far, right now, the greatest benefit of it. I've been in the newspaper business for 27 years. I've been through a lot of different changes, and this is the most positive change, I think, that we've, we've ever had at this paper. Any publication that has photos, headlines, captions, and text can apply the Maestro concept. Newsletters, weekly papers, daily papers, metro dailies, small weeklies, it doesn't matter. The two papers that have formally launched the Maestro concept are the Logansport paper and American Medical News. It's a weekly published by the American Medical Association. Several larger papers are seriously interested in using the concept either in one department or in the entire newsroom. They include the Oregonian, the Virginian Pilot, the Minneapolis Star Tribune, the, the Milwaukee Journal, the Orange County Register, and the Raleigh News and Observer. Some smaller papers like the Albuquerque Tribune have experimented with special projects. We tried out the maestro concept at the Albuquerque Tribune last summer. Uh, we developed our own dream team with reporters and photographers and page designers and artists from all throughout the newsroom, not just the sports staff, to try to present a new layer of uh, coverage to the Summer Olympic Games. In Albuquerque, we thought the Maestro concept worked so well that it's become a model for how we handle a lot of other projects. And in fact, I've hired a new managing editor, and about his third or fourth day on the job, he asked me for a job description, what he should do and how he should perform his daily role. And I just said, Neil, I want you to be the Maestro of Maestros at the Albuquerque Tribune. I think from the first time that I heard Buck Ryan talk about the Maestro system, that what I saw was a connection, and perhaps the answer that we had been searching for for some time where we knew that, that there had to be an organizational system that would work better to connect with the readers, that would allow us to take advantage of the technology, and would allow better input and better work from staff members. I think that after working in the maestro process for more than a year and a half, that it would be difficult, if not impossible, for me to go back to working in a traditional newsroom structure. One way to summarize that would be it would I would feel that it would be as difficult to go back to a traditional newsroom organization as it would be to leave all the technology behind and go back to the old days of, of uh, dumb paper dummy layouts and, and give up the pagination and, and the uh, color capabilities that we have today. Thanks go to many people who made that tape possible, but Jim Herman, chairman of the as &E Small Newspapers Committee, believed in the project the most. Thanks, Jim. After Logansport, I set out to create models for weekly newspapers, medium-sized dailies, and metro dailies. The weekly paper, American Medical News, succeeded so handsomely that it was banned from competition by the Society of Newspaper Design. It won too many awards. The metro daily, the Oregonian in Portland, went on to be named one of the best designed newspapers in the world. At more than 300 people, it is the largest newsroom using the maestro concept.